Hi everyone, my name is Paul Ambrosiusen and this video is to quickly demonstrate what you can do with the Pivot Painter Houdini Digital Asset and what some of the parameters do. The Pivot Painter is a Houdini Digital Asset tool that stores model pivot and rotation information in the model's vertex data and additional UV channels. That information can then be referenced inside of Unreal Engine's shader system to create interactive effects. So as you can see, uh, I made a small demo scene here in Unreal Engine uh, of some of the objects that I've packed or processed using the Pivot Painter Houdini Digital Asset in Houdini. So in this case, we can see that we have a, a star with boxes that, uh, that are being animated and fly outwards from the surface, surface normal. We have uh, that same model, but then with a different animation applied with a sort of wavy pattern. We have a shader version where every single box rotates around its own axis. Uh, we have some cool animated grass that is even interactive so the player could walk through it and uh, bend the grass away. We have some hair works here, or at least it looks like hair. Um, we have some other cool uh, VFX here and we have a animated tree. So this is a static mesh meaning that it does not hold any information data in the FBX which I imported into Unreal Engine. All right, so let's take a look at how we can achieve this uh, in Houdini. So you open up Houdini and uh, when you download this Houdini digital asset, this is the interface that you will see. Uh, you can break it down into two parts. You have a per object basis and a hierarchical basis. For now, we'll just take a look at the per object basis. So the interface of the per object basis is really straightforward. There's just one toggle uh, at the top here, um, which you don't really need to use. So this is mostly for advanced users. So if you want to pack your channels in a custom uh, manner. So in this case, most of the time you want to leave it to default. Other than that, um, you have an input, which is this one, the left one, and you have another input, which is the right one, which wants pivot points. So you plug in your geometry on the left side and your pivot points on the right side. So let's take a look at an example uh, of how you would set up some geometry to be processed by Pivot Painter. So let's start off with a simple sphere that we put down. We then generate some normals for every single point in a sphere. With an attribute wrangle, we will add a string attribute, string name attribute, which we will call box underscore and then a point number. So if we then look at the spreadsheet, we will see that um, all the points on the sphere have a name attribute, right? And they also have a normal attribute. We also have this box object. And this box object, we will simply copy stamp onto the sphere points. In this copy stamp node, uh, I also set it to inherit every single point, we'll inherit the name attribute of the point that we will copy it to so that we make sure that every single box or every single point on the box will share a name attribute with the pivot points that we place down. We then simply transform it, we scale it up by 100, we do the same for the pivot points and that is something we need to do because we are converting this model from the Houdini uh, scene unit to the Unreal Engine scene unit. So one unit in Houdini would be only one centimeter in Unreal Engine. All right, so what would we need to do to process this? Well, like I already said, uh, we need to make sure that our pivot points have a normal attribute, a name attribute, and our geometry needs to have a name attribute that shares with the pivot points. We simply plug in the geometry on the left side the pivot points on the right side and we should have our, our object being packed by using the Pivot Painter tool. If we export this out into Unreal Engine, we get this model which we can apply any shader to we want. Let's take a look at the second option you have with Pivot Painter. Alright, so this time we will look at the hierarchical tab. You can use the hierarchical function if you want to pack pivots for objects with parent-child relationships. 
such as, for example, the tree that we saw in Unreal Engine. So in this case, uh, this tree has two material slots, one for the branches, which includes the trunk in this case. So we can see that those branches are also animated. And we also have a material slot for leaves, because those leaves are attached to the branches and we in inherit the movement of the branches. So in this case, we see that um, we once again have this grayed out box with the uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates of the leaf pivot position, the branch pivot position, and the branch angles, uh, which will remain grayed out unless we choose custom mode, which we will not in this case. We also see that there are three new parameters that we can use when we toggle on HierarchyL setup. It asks for input data, which can be generated pivots or custom pivots. In this case, since we already tried the, cu the custom pivots using the left example, we will now use the generate pivots on this example. If we choose to generate pivots, we only need to plug in our geometry and the tool will process it. So we should already have a result that looks like this, which we can import into Unreal Engine and get the animated tree we saw. However, in order, this to, in order for this to work, we need to specify two groups. A branch group, which is primitive based, and a leaf group, which is also primitive based. So if you import a FBX in Houdini, it will automatically generate groups for every single material slot that you have applied to your model. So in this case, we simply call those groups branch groups for the branches, which you can see here. And we can see a group for the leaves. I then simply rotate it at 90 degrees for it to make sense in Houdini. And then just run it through the soft pivot painter. That is all you need to do for Pivot Painter in order to get it to work. Afterwards, you just simply import it into Unreal Engine, and there you go. You have your animated object without having it be a skeletal mesh. Thanks.